Yo, what's up everybody, how's it going? Today we're having a look at Stick It to the Stickman, a roguelite 2D brawler available on itch.io. Now this game is available at any price you want. You can see here it's name your own price, available for Windows and Mac OS. You can just download it for free if you want, although honestly I, I quite like this game, so you know, throw them five bucks. <laughs> Anyway, we'll have a look at this in just a second. First, I want to show you what it looks like when you download this. So you can see you get this little folder here. All right, you, well, you first get a zip, you unpack it, and then you get this little folder, and you just get an exe that you got to launch. It isn't on Steam. It's only available on itch.io. If that's, um, you know, something that's a problem for you, then I can kind of understand that. But don't worry. It's totally fine. It's totally good to use. So... This is Stick It to the Stickman's opening screen. You start with this general kind of um, options menu, I suppose. It is terrible. This is a really bad options menu. You can see there are no volume sliders. Uh, you can only disable the music, but that's it. Um, there's pretty much no settings whatsoever. Uh, so yeah, that's not great. Uh, you can also see something down here which says, we are sorry about all the bugs. <laughs> there are bugs, yes. Um, although most of them tend to be kind of funny. Like, I haven't really encountered anything that's been game-breaking so much. Mostly stuff that's a little quirky and, like, you know, I, I guess that's kind of funny. But you can continue playing. Anyway, let's play. So, this game is kind of anti-corporate. I don't know if I would even call it corporate satire. Um, it's just straight up... It doesn't like corporations. Let me just put it that way. So, what would we like our minimum wage to be or wage to be? We can choose between $25, $15 and $8. This is our difficulty, right? I'm going to choose $8 here. 25 is the highest. And uh, yeah, the, the game actually gets pretty tough there. So, we're going to go and just start out with the lower difficulty so I can show this off a little bit. You then pick a character. Now, these characters, they do matter, so you can see down here what their starting moves and passive ability are. However, everything that you get on any of these characters is stuff that you can also unlock on any of the other characters. It's really just about what you start out with, right? So, for example, if I play the Jogger, I get these three starting moves and this passive ability, but I can also get these moves uh, on anybody else. It's just a matter of actually uh, kind of like rolling into it, right? So you kind of get a certain strategy, a certain place style already, already handed to you by picking a character, but at the same time, it's also not necessary to pick any character or any specific character to be able to play a certain way. Anyway, you can see we've got some fun characters, the Temp, Weeb, Caffeine Addict, Handyman. Oh, oh, where did you go? No, come down here. Oh, there we go. <laughs> I find this very funny. This is the Task Dodger who, um, as you can see, kind of runs away a little bit. But yeah, uh, let me go ahead and just pick, uh, I think, what's most appropriate for us here. Let's pick the Weeb, right? I mean, I know my audience. <laughs> Thumbs upward mobility is what this company has. Very good. So, you can see here, this is Stick It to the Stickman. Right now, we're just working in our corporate office job. We're just chilling and hanging out and, um, you know, just doing work on the grind. But you know what? I've had enough of the grind. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to push one of my two buttons. Yes, two buttons. This game only uses two buttons, really. We have... We have attack, and we have jump, and then we have a stick, and I guess we have kind of activating stuff. Uh, I suppose three buttons, but really for combat you're only using two. At the bottom, you can see we have this little bar. This bar indicates our order of attacks. So you can see our first attack is this, this kind of like punch, and then we have a knife that we're throwing, and then another punch. Below that, we have this blue bar, that is our health, and below that is a yellow bar that's going to fill up as we go through the game, which is our experience. Whenever the experience bar is full, we're going to level up. Now, there's a little bit of a quirk that comes along with leveling up. I'm going to show that off in a second. That's honestly one of my biggest criticisms of the game, but anyway. On the left side, we have the combo meter. Bottom left side is the combo meter. On bottom right side, there is a slow-mo meter. We're going to talk about those in time. First, let's get up. 
So you can see we got fired and now we can punch a guy. And you can see that whenever I attack, so this is my one button, right? This is my attacking button. I get one of the next, or I get the next move in my list. So I click attack, I throw my knife. I click attack, I punch. I click attack, I punch. I click attack, I throw my knife again. That's all the control you have. It's entirely just about the order of moves. I can jump, as you can see, and I can move around. The moving around looks very funny. <laughs> anyway, up in the top, you can see there is this little star door. And at the bottom, you can see our experience bar is full. The star door is kind of a level up place. So we need to reach the star door to level up and get new stuff. Leveling up is really important. That's what allows you to really make it your way through the game. But uh, here's the problem. If I now go and fight, so you can see down here, I go and like maybe take these guys down. I am not getting experience for this because the star door is already open and my experience bar is already full. This may not seem like a big problem, but I'm going to play in the optimal way going forward, which is I'm going to run to the star door passing past enemies um, when the star door is available. And I personally find that a little bit annoying. It's not my favorite part of the game. And if they were to change something or fix something about this game, I would say that they definitely should make it so that the experience uh, can just carry over into the next level. I mean, why can't I just have free star, do star doors queued? I don't really see a reason why that wouldn't be a possibility. Anyway, let's go ahead and activate this. So you can see now we gain new abilities, right? We can get a dodge roll, a jump kick, a point, or we can re-roll. I'm going to get the dodge roll because it's kind of the most interesting. Also, we can select a promotion. Very good. Let's promote ourselves into dodge rolling. There we go. Punch this guy and you see now we have this dodge roll here, which is actually quite handy. And up we go. Now you may notice that the knife has kind of like an ammo meter, right? This little bar. Yes, I can only use that a certain amount of time. Times. Uh, if I run out, then I just can't use that move anymore until I find ammunition again. Ammunition is dropped by enemies, and as you kind of like go through the game, sometimes you get it as a reward. Anyway, let's go up here. Star door. So I can get another thing. Um, well, why don't we get the forward kick? We can go to the water cooler and heal up a little bit, which is good. Roll away. Kick this guy. Oh, that just missed. So you can see that after I missed my attack, I uh, lost my combo. And what the combo does is it increases my damage. So the higher my combo, the more damage I do on every attack. Meaning there's actually a really strong incentive to get as high a combo as possible. Right, so I missed again right there. And that's just kind of a little bit tricky. I need to make sure that I actually connect with all of my hits properly. Ah, uh, yeah, no, it's, it's it's kind of difficult. And we go ahead and pick this up. And now we can upgrade one of our moves. So, for example, we can upgrade uh, the knife throw into shuriken. So, the karate strike into a karate chop. chop. I'm going to upgrade this into the bicycle kick because I think it's pretty good. And we're going into our first boss. So... You can tell that the controls in this game are a little bit quirky, right? And yes, very much so. So it definitely has this kind of like um, weirdness to it, where a lot of it is not just about kind of being good with your character, but it's also about kind of learning how to best move given the weird kind of movement you are given in this game. Also, this boss is... Oh, the boss actually just straight up got me. Wow. All right, well, let's go ahead and use this as an opportunity to maybe play somebody else. Who do we want to be? Uh, I guess the weep didn't work so well. Let's maybe, let's maybe be the conservative, right? Like the opposite to the weep. <laughs> so anyway, we have a gun now, which is very good. And we have an uppercut and another gun. So you can see with the conservative, we are very much about projectile weapons. All right, let me go ahead and level up here. Um, why don't we... Why don't we drink some coffee? Alright, so there we go. We've got another thing that requires ammo. But, you know, with certain characters, you're just gonna require ammo. So, anyway. A long, like, a large part of this game is managing the movement of the enemies and your movement. Right? In a way, it's all about learning how to utilize the quirkiness of this... Um, 
kind of physics engine here and how the combat system works within that quirkiness. If that sounds annoying to you, then you're not going to like this game. However, I do have to say that personally I actually find it quite charming. Especially once you kind of get the hang of it a little bit. Sure, at first it can be a bit irritating, definitely, and it, it can feel a bit strange. But after you figure it out a little bit... Ooh. Alright, I'm gonna just go ahead and use my gun, there you go. <laughs> after you figured it out a little bit, it can actually become very, very fun. Just really, really cool. Because it's a game that actually gets a lot of its complexity from this physics engine. The combat system itself isn't that difficult as you can see, it's just one button. The main skill that you're utilizing during your one button playthrough is memorization, is figuring out, okay, what comes next, what moves come in what order, and how do I best utilize that. And that is a serious skill. I'm not gonna go ahead and try to claim that that isn't actually kind of difficult. It very much is. And honestly, it's an interesting skill. It's not something that is usually asked of you in video games. And I think it's actually really cool to see that that's a skill that's being tested here. All right, don't worry so much about the individual upgrades I'm getting. Like, you know, when you play the game yourself, you'll, you'll figure it out. But anyway, let me go ahead and go over here. Look at us. Keep increasing our health. I find health upgrades to be very useful. So anyway, what was I saying? Oh yes, memorization is a skill that gets tested in this game. And I think that's actually really interesting. It's not a skill that is commonly tested. And it's definitely a kind of like, you know, skillful skill, if that makes sense, right? <laughs> so yeah. Especially since there is no way to rearrange or delete moves. Now, that's not entirely true, so there are, when you get a level up, you can sometimes say, okay, instead of taking a move, I want to, like, rearrange or delete something. But there's not even a guarantee of you getting that. And um, other than that, it, you just don't have the option. Meaning that there is a very serious consideration that you always have to make. Oh, see, for example, I can remove something here, so if I want to get rid of, for example, uh, this, right, then I can get rid of that. Which is probably a good call. Oh wait, I need to go over there! Fuck! I don't think I'm gonna get, get there in time. Oh, just barely. That was an ammo crate, we want that. <laughs> right, let's keep increasing our max health, we'll just be really chunky, right? So there we go. Oh. Oh, wait, but I still have my combo. Oh, we just got pushed out. It's not a big deal. There we go. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah. Sometimes it can be a bit tricky to get that hit you need. Hey! <laughs> of course, the natural upgrade to Red Bull. Got some, some good old cocaine here. Very good. What was I saying? Let's get ourselves more double experience. Keeping track of the abilities and what order they're in is definitely a real skill. And I think it's actually a really interesting skill. As you do multiple runs with different characters, you're just going to have to kind of memorize what your current character does and in what order. Oh yes, give me more ammo. I'm gonna go down here and, and take down all of these. Because we do want to um, get the experience. Oh yeah, there's definitely like a farming aspect to this. <laughs> okay. We only have five moves right now, which is actually a very low amount, but hey, it's, it's working. Also massive combo. Crazy combo, actually. Okay, get this guy. And we have some fun moves. This is definitely one of the really cool parts of this game. Something I really appreciate about it is that it has a super nice variety of like different moves and things that are available to you, right? Let's get ourselves more guns. And they have all sorts of fun effects. Like for example, you can be, uh, you can force choke people or you can mind control them or you can make them fall asleep. I mean, right now we're mostly just shooting them. 
But even that, I think, is kind of interesting. Alright, okay, so this guy's kind of tricky. We need to be careful. Because uh, he's got a, got a dodge roll. And we don't want to, like, lose our combo. Because our combo is just absolutely massive. Very good. Um, I guess let's get this. Got the boss. Get another thing. Hey, let's get your fire. Why not? <laughs> oh my god, that's actually the, the biggest combo I've ever had. That's kind of crazy. Cool, cool, cool. Clap. So you can see that, for example, is kind of like a, a ranged attack. Like this. You're fired. <laughs> it's like more of an AoE move. No! I lost, oh, I lost my combo. You can see we immediately do way less damage. Ah, oh, that's very unfortunate. So anyway, you go through the game until you reach the final boss, who is at the very, very top of the tower. And then your run is over after you beat the final boss. And you can play on, of course, higher difficulties and with different characters and all of that. It is a roguelike, so, like, the main incentive is to be replayed, right? Like, you're just supposed to, like, go through things. And there's also definitely a bit of, like, an unlock process to, like, get the different things. Now, this is something that I personally, I always find it a little bit irritating. I don't have a solution for this problem, though, and I get why developers do it. But I'm just not a, personally a huge fan of it. But as you go through this game, you unlock more stuff, right? And unlocking more stuff makes it so that you can then get those things uh, in the kind of like level up rerolls. The problem with that, of course, is by getting those things unlocked there, you kind of uh, make increase decrease your consistency, which can make it difficult to actually get what you're looking for. <laughs> so sometimes it feels by unlocking stuff, I've now gotten weaker, which, uh, yeah. I, I don't know. I personally find it a little bit annoying at times, but it's really one of those problems where I just, I personally, I just don't really have a better solution either, right? You want to do unlocks, you want to, like, let people customize their character a lot, but you also, ah, it just becomes difficult. Anyway, let's, let's get this, why not? Alright. Just kind of maximize our, our, our ammo a little bit. So here's our final boss of the game. Let's see if we can beat this. Uh, to be honest, it's looking pretty good, but I, I don't know if I want to spoil it. It's kind of funny. Like, as you can see, it's a, it's a bit of a jokey game. Ooh, that's a lot of damage. <laughs> yeah, we have... We have big guns. Oh, don't fall off. Okay, we gotta, gotta float behind these guys so we don't get shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. A little bit of cocaine, a little bit of a clap. Just the normal stuff, you know? No! Don't kick me off. Alright, you're fired. <laughs> yes, yeah, so there's kind of a swarm here. Oh, we did it, actually! Hey, we did it. You know what? I'm not gonna show it. <laughs> there's there's a really funny like ending sequence. You get cool music like this, and I don't I don't want to spoil it for you. But this was the final boss of the game, so like at this point, I I win. We win. We did it. Good job, everybody. You get cool music as well. Honestly, soundtrack of the game is great. So yeah, um, it's definitely a very small game. I think that is that is what I can say for sure, right? There isn't really that much in it. And it's really very efficient in how it uses stuff. So for example, anything that I can get, right? All the unlocks I can have, uh, all of the enemies can have them as well. All of the abilities they use, I can use. And if you're a game developer, that's a really, like, efficient way of making stuff, right? You don't have to, like, design and create a skill set for the enemies and then do the same thing for the player, but instead you just create one and then just give it to everybody. Yeah, no, that's very efficient. And it also, to be honest, like, personally, I think it leads to what feels like pretty fair gameplay, because you are, you have access to the same stuff that your opponents do, right? Um... It does, however, also mean that in a certain way you don't have the same kind of like, ah, haha, -ha, look at what crazy things the enemy is doing here. Wow, I'm very ripped this time around. Look at that. 
Look at how ripped I am. So yeah, overall this game definitely has some problems. I mean, the issues come in with <laughs> certainly some of the bugs. Um, I know you haven't really seen any of them here. But they do exist. Just, you know, trust me on this. They're not that bad though. Again, they're kind of they're manageable for sure. And it's not, it doesn't have that much content. But I really like it anyway. It's just, it's just got a cool setting. It's got an interesting like theme to everything, right? And it's just kind of funny. And it, it really knows what it's trying to be and it's nothing else. And I think that's really the most important thing with any game. It's like that the game knows what it's trying to be and what it's trying to make. And uh, this game 100% knows what it is and what it wants to be. So anyway. Oh, it doesn't have a... Wait, there you go. You can't pause on the controller for some reason. Again, there's some quirks, but hey, it's, it's free or cheap. Get it for five bucks. Five bucks is fine. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed the video. Give Stick It to the Stickman a try. I personally really like it. I think it's it's quite cute and I really enjoyed my time with it. I played it a decent amount on the Forever stream and I just had a, had a really fun time with it there. As always, please feel free to let me know if there's any game out there that you would like me to review. Um, I prefer indie games that are recent. Right, doesn't have to be immediately released, but within the past few weeks slash months would be best. And uh, yeah, I guess I guess that's it. So I'll see you guys tomorrow. Goodbye.